Okay, so before we can start, just let me know. Do you have any idea what is Citrix and how it works? Anything, any knowledge you have? Citrix, yeah, uh, as an administrator, I mm -hmm. don't have any idea, but uh, we are using Citrix as okay. a what is jump virtualization? server. Virtualization, any yeah. idea on that part? Yes, yes. What is it? What it is? Virtualization, suppose uh, we are using uh, a hardware, okay, mm -hmm. and on, on that particular hardware, we can use uh, multiple OS, okay? Yeah. Yes, so or multiple is, applications. But why we are virtualizing the things? What is the need of that? Okay, uh, because uh, it's a uh, cost effective, na? Right. So, with the help of the virtualization, we can use any hardware up to its maximum efficiency, right? So, if I'm having uh, my my this laptop, right? Like uh, this laptop is equipped with some hardware, right? means as you mm -hmm. can see on my screen my cpu utilization is 15 percent as of now right and i'm only running windows 10 or windows 11 whatever the os it is windows 11 right on this uh, cpu right and my mm -hmm. memory utilization is 46 percent right so what i'm doing here i'm just wasting my resources right but if i virtualize my laptop in that case i can utilize the remaining 80 percent of cpu and remaining like almost 50% of my memory. So that is how it works. It is cost effective for the organization and we can deliver the desktop to end users as a form of virtual machines or VDI. Okay. Now coming to the Citrix. So basically Citrix is a company it is located in US Florida and it is most popular for the two products which is known as GenApp and Gen Desktop. So earlier those products uh, but known as uh, GenApp and Gen Desktop, but after uh, the release of 7.xx version, right, they guys renamed their product to Citrix Virtual Apps and Virtual Desktop, right? So for older guys, you can hurt GenApp and Gen Desktop, but now for newcomers, those products are Citrix Virtual Apps and Virtual Desktop, okay? And if you want to explore okay. more with that basic definition, so you can Google it, but this is quite a... <laughs> good definition what I consider, right? So basically Citrix is popular for the two products only, GenApp and Gen Desktop, and it is a company located in US Florida. Okay. Any doubt okay. here? Now, no. coming to the, uh, this is a kind of introduction session only. So in this session, I am just covering the things which we will perform in upcoming sessions. Okay. So this is the kind of working and key components of the Citrix. So <coughs> how Citrix works. So, so basically on your left hand side, it is an end user device, right? Like it could be a laptop or desktop or mobile, Android, tablet, PC, whatever it is. Okay. So in end user device, what we have to do, we have to install one application, which you know, as Citrix workspace or Citrix receiver, right? And yes, one web browser is required you can use google chrome or you can use firefox any web browser you can use okay so with the help of web browser what user has to do user has to enter some url url is known as the storefront okay so basically storefront <coughs> sorry basically <laughs> one, one minute sir. actually <coughs> no problem take your time <coughs> I'm just suffering from cold since, <laughs> give me a minute. Actually, my cold is almost done, but still having some cough, right? So oh. that is the only reason. Okay. Okay, so storefront is a web page for end user, right? When user hits the storefront, so what happened? It will pop up one web page for end user and on that web page, what user needs to do, user must have to enter the credentials, okay? Then storefront basically a URL, Citrix URL, right? Yes. 
it is a website okay. for your company on which your user lands and user enters their credentials to get into your infra okay okay and once the user enters the credentials the query goes to the delivery controller so basically delivery controller it is a mastermind in Citrix means it is a core component which manage the entire operations in Citrix infra right so when user enters the credentials query comes to the delivery controller and <coughs> delivery controller is a mastermind and delivery controller know like to which server this query needs to be forwarded for validation so as user enters the credential so it will forward the query to the active directory server so what is active directory server any idea on that authenticate yes so it will forward the query to active, active directory server and once active directory server validates like credentials are good okay then again it will forward the query to delivery controller like credentials are okay then it will forward the query to the sql server to check in database like which application or desktop is published to that particular user so once delivery controller get that particular data then after it will uh, show the next page for the user with the applications or icons whatever published to the end users each and everything we will cover in practicals like how things works right so basically coming to here delivery controller is a core component studio it basically studio is a gui console to manage the entire Citrix uh, data center director is a tool for the troubleshooting prospective prospective license server is responsible to allocate the license on each and every virtual machine sql server is for the database active directory server is to, uh, it is to manage uh, user accounts and computers and this is a hypervisor on which the entire infra will be hosted like the application or the servers or the, your desktop whatever it is whatever we have to publish to end user each and everything we will host on the hypervisor only so coming to the core component of Citrix, so core component is store fund delivery controller studio director license server right so these are the core components and sql server and, and active directory server um, is from the microsoft like right? so these are not from the Citrix. and hypervisor into the market we are having three hypervisors available first one is your vmware esxi second one is your Citrix hypervisor and third one is your hyper-v which is from the microsoft microsoft okay so basically am i audible properly right yes yes absolutely correct actually uh, today i'm speaking in some low volume because you know when i'm trying to speak in high now i'm getting tough actually so no, no problem no problem you can speak in lower volume no issues okay so basically we are having uh, three hypervisors into the market uh for older organization or for the big companies you will see hyper-v and uh, not hyper-v uh, vmware over there why because these are the uh, you know uh, big giants and legacy companies and uh, they have hosted uh, their infra on vmware citrix uh, came into the market i think somewhere around 2008 or 9 <coughs> i'm not sure for the exact date so uh, before that only vmware was the option for the companies but now we are having some uh, legacy issues with the vmware and it is a uh, little bit slow if we compare this uh, with the Citrix. and hyper v mm -hmm. is also very very fast right but uh, hyper v is from the microsoft so new companies are utilizing the hyper v you will find Citrix hypervisor multiple uh, in multiple organizations but uh, almost 50 percent of market is captured by vmware okay rest of the 30 percent okay. or 40 percent uh, from the citrix and 10 percent approx uh, for hyper v okay okay <coughs> so no matters which <coughs> no matters uh, like uh, which hypervisor we are using right so the task of for hypervisor is, is just to host a virtual machine on the physical hardware so that is the only requirement okay so in organization you may find uh, some different uh, hypervisors right but uh, 
operations will be same only gui display uh, will be modified right in citrix you will get few option on left hand side in vmware you will get the similar option on your right hand side of the screen something only gui uh, based uh, difference will be there rest of the operations will be same in every hypervisor okay and one more thing also uh, like uh, we are having uh, multiple companies which is using xcpng this is known as xcpng hypervisor so this is a this is the uh, like uh, open source hypervisor and it is available at free of cost okay and it is quite replica of citrix gen server or uh, citrix hypervisor so for smaller uh, organizations where you know money is the problem you will find this hypervisor as well which is known as okay. xcpng okay xcpng yeah now they guys rename uh, this to gen orchestra right something like this so please have a knowledge if someone ask you like on which hypervisor you worked on you can consider this hypervisor as well it is very very good and it is free of cost okay okay and for citrix hypervisor you need some licensing for vmware also you need licensing hypervisor uh, sorry hyper v is free from microsoft but uh, it is uh, uh, very very bulky actually so i have never seen like companies using uh, hyper v and it it came to the market uh, just a few years back now right so it will capture the market but uh, the capture rate is uh, very very slow okay so okay any doubt here in this uh, slide no okay so coming to the layers part in citrix in citrix basically we are having five layers so that left hand side layer which is known as user layer it is a separate layer and it is for end user devices only like like user personal device or corporate device whatever the device uh, users are using it comes under the user layer right and this is our like right hand part is our data center layers right so below you can see it's a hardware layer which is for the hypervisor means you will get a very very good configured hardware and on that hardware network card wi-fi storage cpu memory or graphic card should be there and on that physical hardware we have to configure that physical hardware as a hypervisor okay so one more thing uh what is hypervisor any idea on that part okay hypervisor is a physical box where okay where we can host multiple os or multiple uh, applications no no physical box is physical hardware now what is hypervisor uh hypervisor uh... Uh, it's uh, simply a virtualization of hardware. Right. How? Means okay. if I'm having one physical uh, server with me, right? How mm -hmm. I can configure that physical server as a hypervisor? Okay. Then uh, you need to install that uh, hypervisor, whatever we have, like for VMware or Citrix or Microsoft. Right. So we have to install that in my question. No? hello yes yes tell me yes we have to install we have to install what i'm asking is that okay where mm -hmm. on, on on that uh, uh, physical hardware na? Mm -hmm. okay so in the market we are having two types of hypervisors okay I'm not talking about uh, the companies like Citrix, VMware, or whatever it is, right? I'm just explaining what is hypervisor, okay? Okay, you mean to say that uh, bare metal and all these things? Yes. Okay. So in the market, we are having two types of hyper hypervisor, like type one hypervisor and, and type, two. type two hypervisor. Type 1 hypervisor is also known as the uh, bare metal. And type 2 is type 2. We do not have any additional name for this, okay? So, in bare metal hypervisor, what we have to do, 
फर्स्ट लेयर विल बी योर हार्डवेयर लेयर Like the physical hardware. Means, yeah, we can directly install on that physical hardware. And yes. type two is like uh, we can install uh, any OS, okay, on mm -hmm. on Microsoft or maybe in Linux. And after that, we can install that uh, hypervisor. Right. So on physical hardware, uh, on physical hardware, right? What you need to do, you have to install the hypervisor. as an operating system means in type one hypervisor you have to install hypervisor as an operating system right you can directly install just like we are installing windows on our laptop right in a similar way you will get yes. uh, one os from linux or from citrix right and you have to install that hypervisor directly on the uh, physical hardware this is known as the type one and in type two what will happen you have to install hypervisor as an application not as an os is it clear correct means this is my laptop right in my laptop i have installed one hypervisor which is vmware workstation pro so now in this laptop i have installed this as an operating system or sorry as an application right and to yes. install the application what is the requirement you need an operating system to install any application right without operating system you cannot install the application so in type 2 we we have to install the have to we have to configure the hypervisor as an application and in type 1 we have to configure hypervisor as a operating system so the example for type 1 is uh, VMware. E SXI. Then your Citrix hypervisor. Citrix hypervisor. It, uh, it is also known as the Gen server, the older name of Citrix hypervisor and the Hyper-V and also XCPNG you can also find many more hypervisors because you know now Oracle uh, also launched its own hypervisor right so functionality will be the same in type 2 okay. if we talk about the example for type 2 you will found Oracle virtual box then your vmware workstation then you will found docker and many more right so these are the so what is the difference here these are the operating system and these are the applications right so in Correct. type 2 you have to install as an application in type one you have to install hypervisor as a operating system is it clear yes okay so in production you will always find type one hypervisor right type two no one use into the production right so yes you will find type one only and for testing purpose you can use type two like uh, if you have to create a separate virtual machine or any isolated lab right <coughs> for your learning so yes in that case you can use it now this is the hardware layer on which uh, like we have to configure the hypervisor and rest of the resources we have to configure in our hypervisor only means into the access layer we will configure one storefront server and one Citrix ADC. ADC is nothing, it is a net scaler for the load balancing, right? And okay. in control layer, our main servers will be there, like access layer, like storefront is a web page, right? Which is required to access into the infra. So these products will be into the front, right? Storefront or yes. uh, net scaler. Now into the mid, you will find 
the core servers like delivery controller which is which controls the entire operations then your domain controller for uh, like user authentication then sql server for the database license server for to allocate the licenses and file server it is basically a storage on which you have to store the user data now coming to the resource layer into the resource layer we will uh, store the vdi or the virtual machines which we will publish to our end user like it could be a virtual machine or it could be a your application any doubt VDA here? means VDA? Your VDA is the virtual uh, desktop agent so sorry virtual delivery agent so which is responsible to deliver the like uh, desktop and applications to the end users yeah Okay. okay, so now <coughs> coming to the uh, schedule, what we have to follow in upcoming days, right? So mm -hmm. first uh, session like introduction and prerequisites that is going on, right? We are just discussing the introduction and prerequisites, like what is it takes, how it works, right? And from uh, tomorrow onwards, like uh, we will uh, cover the things uh, with practicals only. Like in the second one, we will uh, learn how to <coughs> install and uh, configure the delivery controller. In the third one, okay. we will learn how to configure the Citrix hypervisor. In the fourth mm -hmm. one, we will learn how to create uh, first Citrix site and how to add delivery controller to that side. In the fifth one, mm -hmm. we will learn how to create the master image or golden image and how to configure the VDA, like virtual delivery agent in your master image. In the sixth one, we will learn how to create the machine catalogs. So basically machine catalogs are nothing. These are the uh, only virtual machines, right? And in the okay. uh, seventh one, we will learn how to uh, create the delivery group to publish the virtual machine or applications to end user. In the eighth one, mm -hmm. we will learn how to install and configure the storefront server. In the ninth one, we will test our entire deployment, like how things works, right? After the deployment. And we will act as an end user and we will hit our storefront server. Then we will try to access the resources or applications, whatever we will publish to our end users. And 10th one is for troubleshooting and backup plan. If something goes down into uh, like production right if any server goes down in that case how to recover from the disaster right so those kind of things mm -hmm. we will uh, discuss in this like you know if any server goes down in uh, if sql server goes down in that case what will be the impact on the production right or if delivery controller goes down or active activity server goes down so those kind of uh, practical scenarios we will cover so 10th uh, lecture uh, for 10th uh, session will be uh, it will be for two or three days why because it is just a uh, troubleshooting only right and that's yeah, yeah. the things uh, that uh, we will cover on day to day basis okay now coming to the <coughs> lab setup so basically here as you can see our uh, total uh, 10 lectures are there so from uh, second to eighth one will be the with the practicals only whatever i will do on my hardware uh, you need to replicate same thing on your hardware right and after every session you will get your recordings and you can follow the recordings right to set up your own infra okay because you know uh, i always believe into the practicals only right it is not okay. like yeah, yeah, i will explain you theoretically and it will be helpful for you it will never helpful for you right so okay yeah i have a question so like the, how to set up my lab that i will guide you and what are the hardware configuration needed that uh, that i will i'm telling you okay so these are the virtual machines now uh, like we have to deploy to set up uh, the uh, entire lab so first server will be the domain controller and second server uh, will be the delivery controller so in my case my domain is tech and tech in your case your domain may be different you can create with your name right so for my domain controller i have allocated to uh, 2 gb of ram and host name i given as dc and this is my Citrix delivery controller so again, uh, host name will be the DDC and the RAM allocated uh, for, uh, to this server is 6 GB. And I join that uh, server into my domain, which is techamtech.com. 
these two servers are the hypervisors like gen server 01 and gen server 02 so why i have picked up two hypervisor uh, just to show you like you know if uh, one hypervisor goes down in that case how to, switch, yeah, how to switch the entire operation to the secondary uh, server <laughs> and these are the client machines like windows 10 client 1 and client 2 and uh, i join uh, both the machine in my domain and uh, we will use those machine as an end user right uh, when we have to connect to our resources so coming to the hardware requirement like i have considered uh, two hypervisors with 10 gb of ram so if you are not equipped uh, with that much of ram so you can eliminate one hypervisor right and uh, coming to the ram requirement like 26 uh, like 8 and 10 gb and uh, you can also uh, like uh, eliminate one uh, client machine. You can consider only one client machine with uh, 2 GB of RAM. So uh, like at least 20 GB uh, RAM uh, is sufficient to uh, deploy the entire setup. Okay. Now, uh, is there any like, uh, okay. can you use VMI workstation or anything? Yeah, VMI workstation you can use. So this is a standard hardware like you know what uh, i use uh, and uh, you know <laughs> uh, to provide uh, if you need any uh, like you know remote server i can do that for you if you do not have uh, any laptop with good configuration so coming to the skill part uh, like uh, the prerequisite like requirement so basic skill is required uh, like having some uh, knowledge of windows server active directory and dscp and like if you know like how to create a user and how to uh, join any computer into the domain like these are the basic things right any doubt okay. in that part no okay so these are the basic things and some like uh, basic networking uh, knowledge is required like dns if any machine is not you know if you are not getting ping from any machine with the ip address or with the host name right so those kind of mm -hmm. troubleshooting knowledge is required this is very very basic right so yeah yeah that i know nobody so now coming to the hardware requirement so for a smooth operation this is a standard requirement to set up the entire lab like uh, ram is 32 gb if you do not have 32 gb in that case 20 gb is must if you do not have 20 gb then 16 gb can be used but operations will be very 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 slow in that case and your laptop or desktop it might get overheated why because we have to virtualize it right Mm -hmm. And CPU that I recommend uh, is uh, i5 or higher with at least four uh, cores in it, right? For uh, your physical cores. And storage, I always uh, recommend to have SSD because, you know, like on normal traditional mechanical drives, now operations is very, very slow. So this, yes. is, this is the hardware requirement. And coming to the software requirement, so Windows Server 2019 ISO, or you can use Windows Server 2022, but... Uh, yeah, uh, please go with uh, like 2019 only. Why? Because it is a stable edition, right? And Windows 10 for client machine. So coming to the Citrix uh, ISO file, so a uh, Citrix virtual app and desktop ISO file that I will share with you. Citrix hypervisor ISO I will share with you, and Citrix Gen Center I will share with you. So let me do that right now. Uh, I think a Windows okay. Server ISO um, files now you can directly download from uh, the Microsoft portal, right? I'm just sharing yes. uh, you uh, link to Citrix ISO files only, okay? Okay. But problem is that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I don't have that kind of hardware actually. So what I can do, I can arrange a lab for you on rental basis, right? So those of the mm -hmm. things we can discuss offline, whatever the charges, why? Because this session is getting being recorded, right? So those kind of mm -hmm. things we can discuss offline after this call, okay? Okay. You can call me separately for that, but otherwise, you know what I have to do? I have to edit the recordings, right? So that I do not want to spend my time on that part, okay? So okay. Uh, software ISO files I already shared uh, with you for Citrix. If you do not uh, know how to download Windows Server ISO file, uh, please let me know. I will share a link, but you can easily get uh, those files from Microsoft website at free of cost, right? So yes. skills, basic knowledge, hardware uh, lab, I already uh, given to you, like the requirements and software ISO, that is done. So now from tomorrow onwards, we will start with the first component, which is delivery controller. And as for the lab, 
Active directory I never consider in the set ticks uh, classes. Why? Because if someone is preferring uh, for the set ticks, so he must know like right how to configure the domain controller. So yes, that is the only reason. I never pick that thing. I always start with the uh, delivery controller. Why? Because it is a core component for Citrix. So from tomorrow onwards, what we will do, we will go practical live with the Citrix uh, delivery controller configurations. Okay. And so okay. on, we will follow the schedule, this schedule, right? Any doubt so far? No. Okay, then so we can discuss the offline for your lab arrangement. And I think introduction is almost done. You are having some basic idea of uh, server. So that is only my requirement. And it is uh, very, very good. And also, uh, we'll discuss for the hardware part with you and ISO I already shared. Okay. Okay, buddy. If you have any question, you can ask or we are good to conclude uh, for today. Uh, we have covered the introduction part. And from tomorrow onwards, we will go with the live and listen. Uh, this session will be very, very long because, you know, we will, when we will configure the core component, the installation only, it will take more than one hour. Okay. So, okay. Uh, please, uh, we, uh, available with some time. And if you need, if you are available in the evening now, so today is Sunday, so I have nothing to do. Right. So if you are okay, uh, I can schedule, uh, one more class with practical, uh, like in the evening or in the night, if you are available, if not, then yeah, no problem. Okay. Today we can sit. Okay, so I will let you know the time. I have to finish some morning stuff. Okay, then I will let you uh, the time after the uh, lunch. Okay. Yeah. Um. Evening time. Yeah. Yeah. It will be good. Okay. 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 That uh, we will discuss uh, mutually, and I will share the timing it means my available slot with you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, man. Thanks. Bye. Okay, then, Mash. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, yes. So now, uh, just uh, just let me know the requirement. What is the exact requirement for you? Okay. So that we can proceed, right? Okay. So, uh, uh, I'll, like I said, uh, our requirement is we have a open the word file. Op open the word file, MS Word, and uh, please uh, point out uh, your uh, like <clears throat> note down the points. Okay. Let me let me do that. Um, Open Microsoft Word or Excel, whatever. We use uh, Google uh, Google Docs in our company. Okay. We have to use Google Docs only to share with everyone. So I will put it here in Google Docs that we are all mm -hmm. aligned. Yeah. So, uh, our requirement is, like I said, we have a, a, a web-based application, mm -hmm. which has one element of that application, which runs on the end user system. Mm -hmm. Okay. That that and that application when it runs on the end user system it mm -hmm. basically captures images from the webcam and sends mm -hmm. them to the server mm -hmm. and uh, on the server we do cloud uh, cloud based uh, video ai processing mm -hmm. to detect any violations that the end user may be committing basis so we do video ai on that image that comes to us okay now our requirement is that some of our some of the customers that we are talking to, some of the leads that we are talking to are saying that they are working with mm -hmm. thin client on mm -hmm. Citrix, mm -hmm. which means we cannot install the uh, the end user software that we install on the uh, agent system. We cannot mm -hmm. install. It. So, so the requirement to is to easy. publish that particular application directly to the Dell Vice thin client or whatever thin client they guys are using. Is no, it? no, onto the Citrix VM where they log in using the Dell Vice. Yeah, I got it. So, mm -hmm, okay. And uh, now, uh, just uh, uh, let me know the hardware configuration of the server, which server you are having with you right now. 
Uh, yeah, our listing server config. Server config is uh, it's an i5. Mm -hmm. um, i5. It's a Dell server or what it is? It's a, it's a server or laptop or desktop, what it is? No, no, it's a server. Okay. So de desktop, desktop server. Mm -hmm. uh, 60, uh, 32 GB RAM. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's got 500 GB SSD. Okay. Um, and uh, has nothing else on it. It's a bare bone machine. Okay. Now, I'll do one thing. Uh, first, uh, we have to configure... Sorry? That's 64 GB. Okay. So I have my team here with me. Uh, I have... Uh, you can you can uh, add them on, on this call. So we are all in the same room right now. Okay. So do one thing. Uh, do one thing. First uh, first of uh, all, uh, what we have to do, we have to configure uh, that server as a bare metal hypervisor, right? So for the same, yes. what you need to do, uh, just uh, show me the download like I, I given <coughs> uh, that uh, like... Uh, ISO file uh, link yeah, to you, know? Just open that. Yeah, yeah. so I, my uh, uh, our developer will just join the meeting. He's on that listing. He will join and he will share this. Thing. No worry. So developers uh, are not required. Why? Because first uh, we have to configure the server, right? I have downloaded it already. Sorry? Who is it? No, no, he has downloaded it. I okay, okay. <laughs> I didn't okay, okay. So... Uh, can I see the screen of your colleague? Yes, he's just joining the call. Mm -hmm. He will join the call and then uh, he'll share his screen and from there he'll, he'll be able to. So do. what you have to do, uh, first uh, you need to, uh, you know, get that uh, Citrix hypervisor ISO file and you have to mm -hmm. run that ISO file into one USB drive and from that USB drive you have to boot uh, your uh, server. Got it, got it. Uh, just one second, I'll turn your screen. Matthew, you want to turn your speaker on? I will turn my speaker on. Sure. So, which company is this? Uh, we are, our company used to be called Uncanny Vision. Mm -hmm. We got acquired last year by uh, an American company called Eagle Eye Networks. Okay. I'm getting yeah. on my screen like Matthew has started the screen sharing, but uh, it's blank for me. Mm -hmm. Is your colleague facing any challenges uh, in sharing the screen? Rohan, you there? He was having some trouble sharing the screen. It was not sharing. So he just logged off the call. He'll just join back in. Okay. And he will, he will yeah. One second. Mahesh, uh, where are you based out of? Basically, I'm from uh, Indore, Madhya Pradesh. Okay. And are you staying in Indore only? Uh, actually, my hometown is Bhopal. But... Uh, oh. My job location uh, was in the earlier. I was working with Infosys as a data center architect. And still I'm working uh, with them. Uh, but uh, right now I'm working from my hometown as a remote uh, <coughs> profile. Okay, so you got uh, Rufus uh, downloaded. Okay, uh, launch that uh, Rufus application. Uh, just checking. Can you... No, 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 no. Too much eco, man. <laughs> Too much eco.
can you hear me guys yes, yes we can hear you okay now there is no echo okay <laughs> so uh just open that your food application no, no, just one second my yeah the speaker is still on okay you want to do that speaker Hey, just one second, Mahesh. Yeah. Guys, I think to reduce the noise, uh, you can use the headset if you have. Hey, Mahesh, uh, can you one second? Uh, uh, yeah, can you hear us now? Yes, yes. Is it uh, clear? Any echo, anything like that? Nothing, nothing. Now it's perfect, right? Okay. So I have downloaded all three files and I have also downloaded a tool to make a USB bootable. Yes, so uh, run that, uh, run that tool, Rupus. Yeah, run it. And from select here, select, uh, select your uh, ISO file. That's a tick hypervisor one. No, 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 not this one. Not this one. This one, yeah. Hypervisor. Yeah. Okay. And uh, that is your device, Ubuntu. Okay, it is fine. I click on start. Uh, FAT32 is fine. No, no, do not change anything. Just uh, click on start. Go with the default option. Click OK. Yes. It will take a while to copy the stuff on. Okay, one more thing that I need to know, like uh, your uh, server, uh, that physical machine, right? So is it, mm -hmm. uh, it is isolated, isolated right now or it is connected to the, your network? It's connected on the network. So it is getting some IP address from the network, right? Uh, right now there is no OS, but it should be like once we have an o, uh, OS mm -hmm. installed, it should be. Yes, means what I'm uh, trying to say is that some DSCP server uh, should be there, right? To allocate the right. IP address. I mean, yes, yes, it's connected on the same network. Okay, okay then. So now, <laughs> just give me a minute. Because on the Zoom call, I will not be able to see your hypervisor screen, right? Because this machine okay. is isolated. So what I'm doing here, uh -huh. okay. I'm sharing uh, one of my video to you uh, uh, to on WhatsApp. Uh, please follow that video. You can see it. You just you just have to boot your server from this USB media. That's it. And after that, you have to follow uh, some basic instructions, like language selection or uh, the other stuff. You can follow that video. I recorded earlier. And I am here in call. If you got a stuck somewhere, just let me know. I will guide you. Sure, sure. Uh, guys, I think uh, that video is recorded in Hindi language. So if you are okay in Hindi, it will be good. Or else I have to share some other video. So if there is any confusion, I'll check with you. Uh, mm -hmm. Open the video. We are just connecting the USB. 
and we'll mm -hmm. start uh, in that USB and start the installation and we'll follow the video. If there is yes. any confusion, uh, anyway, you are on the call, I'll check with you. Yeah, I'm here only. Okay. okay. Hey Mahesh, uh, so we have booted the USB and uh, we have we've okay. gone through a few steps. One step mm -hmm. is select instruction step. Please select mm -hmm. the source. That is local media, right? Yes, local media.
Uh, guys, one more thing. Uh, in parallel, you can also download the Windows Server 2019 ISO Media because it will be required. Yeah, I mean, whatever you shared, all three files we have already downloaded. No, no, not this one. I'm, ta I'm talking about Windows Server 2019. Uh, okay, can you share me a link where I can uh, download? Just go to the Google. Go to the Google. Windows, Windows Server, Server 2019. Yes. Okay. Open the first link. What is that? Just try to change your web browser. It's okay. We have download. We have started downloading from another system. Okay. So we'll keep it downloading. Hey Mahesh, uh, would you like to install any supplemental packs? Required? No, not required.
Okay, Mahesh, we are on the system where uh, like the Citrix has booted uh, customized system status display network and ma management interface. We are, mm -hmm. we are uh, on that list. Okay, uh, just uh, check. Is it getting any IP address from your network? Uh, MAC address. No, it says DHCP, but I don't see any IP address assigned to it. No, is it connected to your network or not? It is. Uh, it is connected. Mm-hmm. Uh, to Ethernet. It mm -hmm. is connected to the, uh, to the LAN, but I'm see the network and management interface. I see device Ethernet zero MAC address DH. Uh, DHCP or static IP, it says DHCP, but the IP address and net mask gateway, all those I see as empty. Means it is not getting any IP address, right? Right. Okay. So, do one thing. Uh, just uh, go to the network management. Network management, okay. Just let me know what are the options you are getting over there. So I selected the network and management interface. Mm -hmm. I see, uh, okay. If I go inside, I see configure management interface, DNS servers, network time, test network. Go to the Display. configure one, the first one, configure. Okay. Now what is what I, uh, the first option says Ethernet zero, uh, mm -hmm. where our driver P, uh, PCI Express uh, gigabit Ethernet controller and it says connected. Mm -hmm. Hit enter. Okay. Now, option is uh, DHCP or static. Uh, select DHCP. Uh, yes, uh, press enter to apply. And then option is to uh, just enter. Uh, only and confirmation. Enter it. Following, so it says the following addresses have been assigned by DHCP. Would you like to accept them and continue with DHCP enabled or convert to a static configuration? No, no, so, continue with DHCP enabled. Yeah, uh, the following addresses have been assigned by DHCP, it says first. Mm -hmm. But uh, still, the IP address is empty, net mask says none, gateway says none, and hostname says localhost. <laughs> so mm -hmm. Should I change to static and uh, use some IP? Static you can change, but uh, you need to get some static IP address from your network team, right? Or, uh, like with the uh, same network ID, right? Yes. So you can do that thing like what you can do. You can uh, <coughs> enter the IP address manually, like static one. And please uh, yes. cross uh, check with your uh, like network team, like which IP is available. I'll check that. I'll check that. And I think there was a net test option available so after that i'll do a test and see if it is working okay okay please do that i'll proceed with that because dhcp right now it's not as it doesn't seem to be assigning any value yes so, yes. so that is the only reason uh, um, in that case you have to go with the manual ip setup right yes uh, so let me i'll just mute again and i'll just try that yeah
hey my uh, hey my it's been uh, configured and i'm able to ping the device as well okay <laughs> now you are getting reply from that machine yes yes okay now <coughs> go to the downloads folder this it takes files okay. what you have downloaded and install that right. application it hypervisor gen center see the ladi third one yeah install it uh, onto my machine onto yes. this machine okay yes basically this application it is a gui tool from which you can manage your hypervisor right okay <laughs> yes now go to the start open gen center click on it now click on the add a server enter the ip address yeah enter the ip address and enter the uh, root uh, uh, password the password uh, what you have given at the time of installation right so on the citrix i i mean on the other device i'm still on uh, network and management uh, interface mm -hmm. okay. click okay click okay so now you are connected uh, with your hypervisor right so okay so does this mean it's a successful connection no uh, right click on it and connect it right click on it connect mm -hmm. now what is happening here just uh try to ping uh, that ip address it is fine but why it is not getting connected uh, just give me a minute uh, i'll just check if there is anything blocking or uh, i'll just check with the network team just give me one minute yes sir
Uh, hey, Mahesh, can you just check? Uh, my screen is still visible, right? I think it's connected now. Uh, yes, it is connected now. So, <laughs> now, uh, uh, first we have to create a, a virtual machines here. So, uh, just show me the uh, folder uh, where you have downloaded that uh, those ISO files. Okay, just give me a minute. I'll just I have downloaded the ISO on another system. I'll yeah, can you please uh, copy that file to this machine? Yes, yes. Just give me one minute. Yeah, hi, can you hear me? Is it copied? Give us a minute, please. We are just getting it uh, moved. Mm -hmm.
Hey, hi, Mahesh. I have it downloaded now. Uh, okay, uh, go to the folder. I am. Uh, you can see my screen, right? This is the yes, ISO. Yes, yes, yes. Go to the folder. Go to the work folder. Which go to the work folder. On the same window. Right click on set tricks. No, no. Okay. Right click on set tricks. Then go to the property. Now go to the sharing. Click on the advanced sharing. Share this folder and apply. Then okay. Now copy that path like uh, G15 slash Citrix. <coughs> now here uh, click on a uh, new storage and uh, select the windows file sharing this one no the last one windows file sharing click on next now uh, name it like iso iso only okay next now enter that path Click on finish, but it will not connect in that way. Okay. Uh, close this. Uh, click on user, uh, use uh, different username and enter the username and password of your machine. Of my machine. Yeah. Because you know what we are doing here, we are uh, trying to connect your machine shared folder to Gen server. Click on finish. <laughs> okay, DNS lookup failed. Uh, do one thing close this, click on close. Replace the host name uh, by IP address, like just replace the G15 with the IP address of your machine. Yeah, now click on finish. Just one second, just confirming 192, 168, 193. This time it should work. No, uh, unable to mount the directory. Close this and uh, <coughs> check the username and password. Like, uh, is it uh, on any domain? In that case, you must have to enter your domain, then slash uh, your username. Uh, just one second. Let me uh, username. Would... Just one second. Mm -hmm. Let me use it. Okay, can you just explain once more on the domain part? How do I check in? Sorry? You were, ex uh, you were asking me to check something, right? Uh, yes, yes. It means uh, you are using local credentials or it's a domain uh, user account means which user account you are using? Local, local. Local means that there is... Uh, uh, I lost your screen. Can you please share it again? Okay. Yes, it is visible. Yes, uh, go to the local uh, user accounts and computers on your machine only. Mm, user accounts. Yes. Edit local users and groups. Mm, yes, go there. No, uh, no local. Uh, ha, 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 ha. Uh, just uh, show me the hostname of your uh, machine. 
go to the uh, properties in my computer so what is the domain name here uh, okay it's a windows uh, 11 home device name is this uh, just uh, mm, you will find somewhere like rename this pc option yeah at the top of your screen no 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 we do not want to uh, click on cancel uh, click on domain or work group yes click on it so what is here okay here it's a local machine right hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. click on cancel go to that window again and uh, uh, cancel this, cancel this. Uh, okay, I'll just turn off the Wi Fi as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, cancel this now. Uh, on your uh, center of your screen, click on the console, console okay, tab, yeah. click on the console tab. Yeah, okay, now enter the password. Uh, for the hypervisor okay now type one command access console x s no no x s s for singapore and uh, c for canada control no no console console yes hit enter okay so now uh, go to the local command shell, the second last last option. Enter the password for root user. <coughs> now here, uh, just try to ping your local machine from hypervisor. Hmm, that is a problem, right? Okay. <laughs> Do one thing now. Uh, on the start of your machine, open the firewall. Sorry? Open the firewall in your local machine. Uh -huh. Where it is, uh, firewall is on. Yeah, click on this, allow app, app or feature. Now click on the chain setting. Click on the chain setting. Now scroll down and look for uh, file and printer sharing option. Sorry, file and? File and printer sharing. File and printer sharing. Okay. It is enabled, right? Uh, check this for both the network, like private and public. No, no, uh, check that box yeah. and uh, click OK. Click OK. Now uh, go to uh, now uh, press Control C here in this screen and try to ping it again. Mm -hmm. What is happening? Just cross verify the IP address. Is it correct? I'll just exit from here, show you that it, now I changed to TSCP. It got uh, automatically assigned 1.90. No, no, uh, I'm talking about your uh, local uh, machine IP. My IP address, OK. Yes. Let's see if it got changed. No, no, IP config, not if config. Yep. What is the IP address? Uh, 193, it's still same. Mm -hmm. 1.193, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> and why it is not pinging? Uh, just try to ping one more time.
and just try another ip what if you yeah just try to ping any other ip no hmm okay uh click okay now go to the configure management interface something is wrong uh click on the first one hit enter uh, uh it is getting ip uh, from uh, dscp right yes uh click on dscp mm, hit enter now continue with the dscp enabled hit enter now uh, keep the current gen center name hit enter click ok now let's see if ip is changed or it is the same ip it is getting same right I, same ip hmm. <laughs> gateway pinging failed Fails. Okay, uh, do one thing, uh, do not waste uh, time in that. We have to find some alternate way. Uh -huh -huh -huh. Uh. Uh, like we are trying to push, uh, like instead of network, can't we push the file some other way? No, no. Uh, we are only having two ways. Now, either we can use uh, we can use the physical media, right? So, physical media is not uh, feasible, right? You have to, uh, you know, uh, insert uh, the USB drive again and again into your hyper <coughs> into your hypervisor CD or DVD that I do not want actually. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Now, what we can do here? Again, go to the firewall in your machine. Go to the same option. Allow app and feature. Are you getting any option to disable the firewall in this machine? Yeah, I'll turn it off. Yeah, please turn it off for now. Now, uh, try to ping. But, <clears throat> okay. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, do one thing. Uh, just check the DNS servers in a uh, hit, hit okay. Enter, hit enter. Uh, cancel this, cancel this. Now go to the DNS server, DNS. So your DNS server is 183.182, okay. And uh, click on the go through a test network. Okay. Hit enter. Mm, same, uh, ping the local address, first one. Okay, means it's uh, pinging itself, right? So, uh, do one thing, uh, go to the, <coughs> uh, cancel this, cancel this, and uh, uh, again, uh, escape key one more time, go to the main console, no, no, escape key. Refer to where? Yeah, go to the home screen, back, press the escape key, now, uh, the uh, third last option, reboot or shut down, reboot your hypervisor. And after reboot. reboot, yeah, reboot server, press yes. F8, yeah, press F8 key. F8. Okay, let's wait for it. We will see after reboot uh, which IP it will uh, get from the DSCP. Okay. Okay, one more thing. Uh, go to your command prompt in your uh, local machine. 
okay and try to ping uh, ip of uh, any system of your colleague this one second will confirm this me ethernet la la जस्ट पिंग पिंग समथिंग इज ब्लॉकिंग राइट डू यू हैव एनी अदर आईपी एड्रेस दिस वाज माय कोलीग्स आईपी person seem to be pinging mm. 1.1 it should be your gateway right yeah that is successful uh, internet is connected should i try connecting to the wifi then pinging pinging ah oh, this this is our wifi and internet are on both are two different two different So see, then that came to me. One fifteen, I can connect. One fifteen, I need to check. Sir, I think sir, I think I need. Actually, here I am getting. What is it? It's a sir. It's it's a. I'm sir. Now I'm now trying sir. Okay, to there it's pinging. Yeah. Another is there? Just one more. Okay, just check somebody. Or if comes on router, you just tell me one more. Somebody's IP. So this I just tried another IP, one fifty nine. A local system. Now, sir, that that is successful. Okay, so can you ping the same IP address with Gen Center console? Yeah, ping the same IP address from there and see. Uh, I had to go to console, right? Console. Yes. Three. Access and console. Access console. Yeah. Okay, got it. Okay, now it's successful. Hmm, for your system, okay. right? yeah after reboot it seems to be successful okay perfect so now uh, go to the new storage and like this one enter uh, rename this <laughs> click on next enter your ip slash uh, no no not with the host name enter the ip address Okay, the IP address. So successful. I have ISO here now. Okay, so now uh, ha, 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 ha. click on new VM, new virtual machine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So first uh, select a Windows Server two zero one nine. Okay. Next. Now name it like uh, DDC. 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 Yeah. Delivery controller. Uh, click on next. and uh, from uh, this uh, drop down menu select the iso media or windows server 2019 okay it is windows 10 or what you downloaded it's windows 2019 no, so it is windows... showing in windows 2019 it the file name came like this just one second and anyway, since you asked yeah. i want to bit confirm so just confirm just one second
Yeah, and can you hear me? I can hear you, Mahesh. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, like you're right, it was the wrong ISO file. Uh, yes, yes. Give one more minute. So what you have to do now, you you you, you just have to copy uh, the new ISO file on the same folder, right? That's it. Okay, I'll move it to here. I'll select the new ISO and then click on next. Yes, yes. Not now. Right yes. now. Right now. Cancel this. Cancel this. Yeah. Once you copied uh, the ISO file on the destination folder, you have to uh, click on that uh, rescan option, right? So it will reflect the new ISO media. Okay, over here. Got it. Rescan, yeah. and then I'll get the new ISO here, and okay. Yeah. Hey, uh, Mahesh, this is correct, right? Uh, the, from the file name, this is uh, how usually the. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. this is mine.
So I'm just doing the steps once again. I have rescanned and the file has appeared. And I'm mm -hmm. selecting Windows Server 2019. Rename it as EDC. EDC. Next. EDC or DDC? Yeah, DDC. The first okay. one, yeah. Click on next. So, uh, click on next. Now, memory, increase memory uh, to 6 GB. Make it 6 GB. Okay. Click on next. And storage 32 GB will be fine. Uh, click on next. And next again, create now. So it will be created. Uh, click on DDC. Click on the console. Uh, maximize the window. Okay, so this is just a simple installation, right? Right. So first install the operating system, then we will continue. Okay. And I'm going for a lunch break. Okay. So sure. I'm on mute. Okay. If you got stuck somewhere, just text me on my WhatsApp number. Okay. 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 By then I'll have this uh, Windows server. So it's just uh, straightforward, right? The installation. Yeah it's, a sim yeah, it's a simple installation. Okay. Uh, select the second option, second one. Installation, I think, okay. First one, right? No, no, custom one. Second one. Sorry? Custom, okay. Simply click on next. Simply click on next. Okay, now it will take a while, okay? Sure, sure.
Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so hmm, just let me know. Do you have any domain controller uh, configured in your infra? No, we don't have. Because you know, Citrix uh, will never work uh, as a local user account, right? So mm -hmm. in that case, what we have to do, just check the IP address of this server. Click on the local server. Click on that IPv4. Mm -hmm. Here, right? Mm -hmm. Just check the IP. Is it getting IP address from your DNA? No, 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 no. <coughs> right click and click on status. Click on the details. Yeah, 197. 1.97. Okay, means you're getting IP uh, from same network, right? Correct, yes. Okay, close this. So we have to configure one domain controller also, right? Close this, close this. Do one thing. Uh, click on the computer name. Click on change. And make it uh, DC. Replace each and everything and make it DC. Click OK. okay. Mm -hmm. Click OK and do not reboot it. Click close this. Okay. Click restart later. Now, for a domain controller, we have to give some static IP, right? So, uh, click on IP before again. IP before, okay. Uh, right click status. Go to details and. Uh, just remember this IP address, like uh, your IPv4 and subnet is fine and gateway. We have to enter uh, those uh, uh, manually. You can snip that window, snip it. I am just, just 1.97, okay, I've noted it down. Uh, just, just that details is enough, right? Yes, and your uh, this uh, DNS server name is also required. Uh, DNS server, the DNS server IP, uh, IPs, is it? 49.205. Yes. yes. And your gateway, it is 1.1. Okay. It is 1.1, uh, 193, 82, 243, 64, 49, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, Okay. Okay, now close this. Okay. Go to the properties. No, no, on the same window. Go to the properties. Double click on IPv4. And uh, select to use the following IP address. Paste the IP address. Like enter it. No, no, one dot uh, in the gateway mention one dot one. Uh, prefer DNS, uh, leave it empty. No, no, right now <coughs> nothing is required. Click on OK. Okay, just confirm one dot nine is OK. Click on OK. Again, OK. Close this. Now restart the machine. I'll just manually restart, right? Mm -hmm.
now on your right hand side just right click on ddc sorry on your left hand side right click on ddc okay go to the properties okay and uh, rename this to dc only yes click okay, okay. now log into the machine Okay. Wait for the server manager. Now, uh, click on the manage on your right hand side. Yeah. Add roles and feature. Click on next. Next again. Okay, that is fine. Next, uh, select Active Directory and Domain Services. <coughs> the second option, Active Directory and Domain Services. Click on Add Feature. Click on Next. Mm, again, Next. Next, Next, and simply install that role. It will take a while. Hello. Yes, tell me. No, can I just explain briefly, like what all are the steps that we did? Like, what is it actually that we are doing? Uh, most of the part I've got it, but just to mm -hmm. confirm it, this process, what are we doing here now? So basically, you know, uh, Citrix or virtualization, we cannot host any application with local user account. Mm -hmm. So for the same, we are creating one Active Directory server. Okay. And then we will create uh, another Citrix server that is a delivery controller. So, wait, okay, I think it is almost done. Click on close. Now, uh, click on that uh, uh, orange flag. Mm, orange flag as in this one? configure no, this no, no, no. at the top you are getting one uh, flag now oh, okay yeah uh, click on promote uh, this to uh, domain controller now click uh, add a new forest the third option now domain name you can mention like uh, abc.com or anything whatever you want okay uh, no no what you have entered what is standard it? two random letters UB uh, should be dot com okay UB dot com okay click on next now uh, functionality is fine uh, please enter some password for uh, disaster recovery mode next should I change this no, 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 no. This is no, no. <coughs> Wait for it. Okay, click on next. Uh, that is fine path uh, for database click on next review is done click on next click on install okay now it will take some time in the meantime uh, create uh, one more virtual machine click on new vm from the other uh, send center right uh, yes okay the new vm again windows server 2019 then name it ddc next select the iso 
the emails okay mm -hmm. click on next that is fine uh, increase memory to 6 gb next that is fine click on next 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 and create it now go to the ddc go to the console okay uh, create one more virtual machine click on new vm again then same next uh, now name it the uh, store front s t o r e Sorry. store front store front next simply select the iso same iso right yes next next memory will be 4 gb is enough for storefront next again next next and create now go to the console of a storefront. Now go to the console of the storefront. Okay. Okay, it is loading. Now go to the DDC and start the installation. Okay, which one should I second? Second one. one, second one. I'll click on next. Yes. Same uh, do with the storefront as well. Okay. Now, check the domain controller, what is going on over there. Okay, it's uh, configuring. Okay, DC stands for domain controller, DDC stands for delivery. Delivery controller and storefront is a web page for end user. Okay. What is the application name uh, that uh, you want to publish? It's uh, called Remotify. Okay. And you have a setup of that application with you, right? Like installation files. Uh, correct. So yeah. I think Rowan would have already told you we need it on a uh, different machine, a thin vice box. So we need to add that uh, over here and get it installed on deployed to that system. Mm -hmm. So what we will do, we will publish the application from Citrix server and user can access the, the application on your uh, thin client uh, over the uh, web browser. Uh, sorry, could you just repeat that again? Uh... Means what we will do, we will publish that application from Citrix server, right? And okay. your uh, end users can access that application on your Dell device uh, with the help of any web browser. Okay, with the help of device box okay yes. uh, so the thin vice box also we have to configure right nothing nothing to do okay we just need to put the storefront url i think over yes. there, right? As yes. a, we just you I just see. have to uh, put that url in the startup of dell voice right and right. user will be able to access from any machine which is connected in your network okay i think i got you okay
Okay, in the meantime, create one more machine with Windows Server and name it like uh, uh, application server. Make it AWP hyphen SVR. AWP hyphen SVR. Yes. One word? Hyphen hyphen dash. Yes. And uh, uh, again, uh, put the hyphen like dash and then M, capital M for master image. Sorry, capital? M, M for master. We are okay. going to we are going to configure this machine as a master image, okay? Or golden image. Okay. okay. Click on next. Next, next, and simple installation. Start the installation. Uh, ISO I changed. ISO should be the same server 2019, right? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, next, next. Memory also 2 GB? No, no, 4, 4. Make it 4. Okay, next. Next, next. I'll do create now. Yes. We are just installing the things, right? Nothing configured so far. We only configured uh, the domain controller. Okay. Now uh, go to uh, the domain controller. Okay, log into this machine. Wait for the server manager. Uh, click on the tools. Active by active users and computers. This option, right? Mm -hmm. Active directory users and computers. Right. Okay. Maximize this. Expand ub.com. Uh, go to the users. Click on user. Uh, on right hand side, right click on administrator. Okay. Copy. Okay. Create one user, name uh, any, make new user with your name or whatever it is. No, 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 no. Put some name. Okay. And uh, in the user logon name, enter the logon name for user. Make it Matthew only. Okay. Click on next. Now enter some password. Click okay. on next. Click on finish. Now, on your right hand side, uh, like uh, sorry, left hand side, right click on ub.com. Mm, right click, right click on it. Now, uh, go to the new, new OU organizational unit. Now, uh, name it like VM or virtual machines. Virtual machine. Virtual machine. Virtual hyphen machine? Just... Yeah, anything. It should be identical. That is the only reason, right? Uh, okay. Click OK. So, your virtual machines will be stored here. Now, again, right click on ub.com and uh, create one more OU. Here, uh, you can mention like uh, uh, remote users or office users, something like this, who will be going to, you know, use uh, your uh, applications. I'll just put app users. Uh, yes, you can do that. Uh, okay, I'll just put office users. 
click ok so uh, on the center of your screen right click new user okay make it uh, first name test user 01 and uh, same uh, okay. thank you and this will be shared with us right all these recordings yeah each recording will get now uh, go to the ddc okay click on the local server local server okay click on the computer name change now make it ddc ddc okay into the domain wait 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 oh, uh -huh. i already clicked on okay uh... now uh, what you have to do you have to reboot your machine then it will allow you do one uh... thing reboot reboot the machine restart now in the meantime, go to the store point. Okay. Same on the local server. Click on computer name. Click on change. Make it a store front or make it SF-01. SF. SF F for front. Okay. Hyphen 01. Okay. Click on the domain. Enter your domain name ub.com. Click OK. Mm -hmm. What is going on here? Mm -hmm. Why it is not communicating? Okay, there is something wrong with the DNS. Uh, open command prompt in this machine. No, not here, not here. In virtual machine. Just click on the full screen, no? Click on the full screen. Full screen, where is that? Yeah, I see it. Okay. Open CMD. Now, uh, from here, just try to ping the domain controller. I need to know the IP of that one. 97, it's 1.97, right? Okay, replying. Okay, now try to ping with the host name DC. Type ping space DC. Sorry? Ping with the host name. Type ping space DC. Uh, not DC. Uh, I, uh, it's uh, yeah, DC. DC only. DC only. Ping DC. Yeah. Okay, replying. Now uh, ping uh, uh, that uh, ub.com. not applying with this right so one dot uh, go to the um, network adapter of this machine no, server manager is open now uh, click on the that server manager click on the local server Okay. Click on the IPv4. Okay. Double click. Go to the properties. IPv4. Now, uh, the blue one. Uh, use the following DNS server address. Check this one, not IP. Yeah. Enter the domain controller IP address here. Domain controller IP address. So, yeah. so 1.97. Yes. 
now click ok again close this now uh, again uh, try to join this into your domain click on the computer name change make it a uh, storefront xf501 enter domain ub.com click ok and check if uh, this will work okay now enter the matthew username that we just created in active directory One second, sorry. Click OK. Uh, just confirming, like we gave Matthew only, right? Or yes, yes, Matthew, Matthew only. No, username and password is incorrect. Click OK again. Okay, do one thing, do one thing. Use attached user. No, I got, I got it. I mean, the password was wrong, I think. Just one second. Yeah. Okay, click OK. One more time. Close this. Close. Yeah, and restart. Restart now. Okay. Repeat the same for uh, all the machines like uh, TDC and App Server. First, enter the, the DNS. Right, as we did in uh, this machine, store fund. First, go to the network adapter and add the DNS of domain controller, and then you can join into the domain. Mm, sorry, we need to go to the local server and. Mm -hmm. No, 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 wait, wait. First, add that DNS address now. Open IPv4. Okay. Yeah. Click OK. Now join this into the domain. Restart? Yes. Repeat the same for uh, the no, not not here in the app server here. Here also same steps, right? Yes. Uh, computer name, what 
do I need to put? Mm, same app hyphen SVR hyphen M. App hyphen SVR. Yeah, hyphen M. Yes. Okay, I've done that. Uh, next step. Give me a minute. Now go to the DDC. Uh, I'm on DC. No, no, DDC, delivery controller. Okay. Uh, click on the other user. No, 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 do not use that. Click on the scale, click on the scale window. I'll go full screen. Uh, yes, now the type user? that Matthew user. and log in. Now, uh, minimize this, minimize this from the top. Now, so in the in the DVD drive, select the six ISO media. In the drop down, in the drop down at the center of your screen, yeah. Select the Citrix virtual apps and desktop. Okay. Now you can go to the full screen mode. Okay. Open the file explorer. Okay. Now, uh, double click on auto select. Click yes. <coughs> now we are having two options here. Like, you know, either we can publish applications only or we can publish uh, application and desktop both, right? So for learning perspective, we will go with the uh, second option, right? Okay. Click on start. Uh, the second one start, right? Yeah. With the help of second one, you will be able to publish desktop and application both. Okay. Now, what we have to do, we have to configure this as a delivery controller, right? So, select the first one, delivery controller. Click on it. No, no, okay. click on it. accept the license next so along with the delivery controller we are going to deploy studio director and license server on the same machine right but in production you will find separate machine for separate uh, core components right but we are in test lab so it is okay we can uh, go with the uh, director and license server on the same machine click on next okay. so for database uh, it will use sql server and SQL Express is uh, already there in that ISO file package, okay? And Windows Remote okay. Assistant is for the troubleshooting purpose, like uh, if uh, we have to perform any troubleshooting, like if a user is complaining, like they are unable to launch the application or desktop. So for those kind of issues, we will use the Windows Remote Assistant feature. Click on Next. So these are the uh, port numbers, uh, which 
will be open during the installation click on okay. next so okay you started the installation okay no worries so this installation it will take uh, somewhere around 45 minutes right so after like it will prompt you to restart your machine in between so what you have to do you have to restart the machine and after restart you have to log in with the same user account that is matthew right from which user okay. account we have initiated the installation right okay so it will take some time in the meantime what we can do we can go to the store front go to the store front okay login with the domain user account login with which one uh, domain user account that you are matthew user now replace the dvd drive with that virtual application the second one open yeah. the file explorer uh, this one only right citrix virtual apps and desktop all right open the file explorer okay put a select mm -hmm. yes <laughs> go with the second one here select the explore file citrix store file okay. citrix store friend okay so basically store friend is nothing it will install the web server iis role in this machine and mm -hmm. we will be, we will publish that web page to our end user got it grab the license and click on next so it just simply install the iis role here in this machine in the meantime uh, go to the application server okay login with the same user account <laughs> now in the meantime what we can do in the application server we can <laughs> we can install the application right so uh, just locate the uh, the installer uh, installation package of your application which you need to publish uh, sorry could you just repeat again i need that application which you want to publish to your end user we have to install right. that application in this machine okay how do i get that file over here uh, where it is located it's there on my local system but i need to put it over here right yes so what you can do you can copy the path to that uh, shared folder right we have shared one folder okay. from your device yes yes yeah copy it over here okay one second and what are the prerequisites to install that application is there any dot net or anything required to install this uh nothing is required 
okay download it Okay, I'll put it there in the shared folder. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, open Runbox in this machine. Open? Runbox, run. Run, okay. Now, uh, uh, backslash, two time backslash. Okay. No, not this one, not this one. Backslash. Ah, okay. Yeah. Then uh, your IP address of not host name, enter the IP address of your machine. <coughs> uh, again, backslash. Well, let me just confirm. Uh, again, backslash, hit enter. Uh, Citrix, I should give the full name, right? Or just not required, not required. 193 backslash. 193 okay. backslash. No, no, uh, wait, 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 wait. Okay. So, sorry, just... Okay, I'll enter backslash again. Hit enter. What is that? Uh... Okay, click OK. I think one Windows was prompted to enter the yeah, credentials, like minim, uh, minimize the server manager. Minimize the server manager. That came with when I did not enter the uh, slash. Okay, do it. Okay, this time it didn't come. What is that? That uh, resistance account is currently logged out. Why? Mm, hit OK. <laughs> Should I try pinging or anything? No, 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 no. Uh, do one thing go to the domain controller and tie the same with domain controller. Open run box. Yeah. That's no, fine, no, right? issue. no issue. Open the run box here and enter the IP. Hit enter. And again, uh, slash. Yeah, hit enter. Okay. Now, enter the credentials of your laptop, okay? Okay. Click OK. No. Uh, again, click on OK. Try again. Uh, same URL? Yes, yes, same. Hmm. <coughs> OK. Slash Citrix is not required or that's not required? I try. You can enter it. Try with that. What is that? Mm -hmm. Okay, do one thing now. Mm, okay, uh, I'm having one more solution here. Uh, click on the local server. Click on the local server. Okay. And uh, click on the computer name. Okay, uh, click on that uh, remote desktop. Remote desktop. Okay. Enable it. Uh, click allow. No, no. Click allow remote connection. Apply. Okay. Now minimize that window. Okay. 
Now open MHTSC in your laptop and take a remote of your domain controller. MHTSC type MHTSC. Okay, M I M S T S C. C. No, no, S S for Singapore. Okay. Hit enter. Enter the IP address of domain controller. That is ninety seven, right? One year. Click on connect. Okay. Now enter UB backslash username. UB, UB backslash backslash yes username Matthew. No no one time backslash only one time backslash. Only. Okay. And password. Click OK. Yes. Now <laughs> minimize this uh, from the top. Minimize it. Now uh, directly copy uh, the file from your download location and paste it over there. I copy this and paste this in in that console. Yeah, remote desktop. Minimize it. Paste it on desktop. Uh, copy this again. Copy it from here or cut it. Cut it. Okay. And go to the C drive, make one folder, make one folder by name software, okay, and paste it over here. <coughs> now uh, close that RDP console, not required now. <laughs> Now go to that app server. Open Runbox again. Enter the IP of domain controller, like 97. And then again slash C dollar. C dollar. Yes. Click OK. Now copy it from here. Copy it. I'll copy it to desktop. Yes. <coughs> now install this. Mm. This just to check the application. This will, I mean, uh, the aim no. is to install on the device. Directly install this. <coughs> okay, I'll run the application. Yeah, I'll launch it and see how it works. What is that? I think uh, there is no internet on this machine, right? Correct. Okay, anyway, application is launching, so that's it. That's I only need to check. We can fix that internet issue later on. Now, delete that installer, not required. 
Okay, so now um, go to the DDC and check what is the status of installation. Uh, click on close wait for it to restart Login with the same user account. It will automatically resume the installation. You have nothing to do, okay? Okay. And again, it will prompt you to restart again in some time. In the meantime, go to the store front and check the status of the installation. Okay, store trend is finished. Yeah, click on finish, restart the machine. Now go to the uh, delivery controller and check. Okay, it will take some time. So this call is about to over in one minute, okay? And that installation will take some time, okay? So it will prompt you to restart, right? So whenever it will prompt, please restart the machine and log in with the same user account, okay? Okay. And once that installation is completed, now just uh, ping me on WhatsApp, okay? Then I will share new invite to you, okay? Sure, sure. Okay. It will take uh, somewhere around twenty minutes, okay? Do twenty not minutes. Yeah. Do not interrupt the installation, right? Oh, okay. Okay. Just follow the instructions here. Yeah. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Click on next or? Uh, simply uh, click on next. Uh, click on finish and launch the studio. So <coughs> what we have done. Uh, Storefront installation, uh, go to the storefront. 
login. <coughs> okay, and we also installed that uh, application in that machine, right? Okay, perfect. Right. Uh, minimize this, minimize this. No, no, entire uh, storefront server. Go to the delivery controller. <coughs> now, what we have to do, we have to create no, no, go to that. <coughs> now we have to create our first site. Okay. Uh, make it full screen. So in Citrix, we are having uh, three options available. Like the first one is to set up a new site to deliver applications to end user. And if you do not have any uh, like virtual machine or if you do not have any hypervisor, in that case, you can also use any physical machine you can install the application in physical machine and you can publish that <laughs> with a remote okay. user access and third okay. option is for uh, scale up your deployment means if you are already having one running delivery controller and you want to add few more delivery controller to for load balancing you can use third option right so here we will go with the first one why because we have to set up our site right click on that I have already clicked, uh, just waiting for it to open. <laughs> oh, is there any network issue? No, okay, this is correct. Mm. I'll click again, nothing seems to be opening. Mm. Wait for it, uh, okay. Now, <laughs> we have to uh, give the site name, so like, uh, it could be your office location, your home location. Just uh, make uh, uh, enter some site name from which location you are. Okay. Okay. And click on next. So in the Citrix, we are having three type of database. First database is for uh, <coughs> site database. In this, whatever the configuration we are doing it, all those logs will be installed in the site database. Monitoring database is to monitor the hardware utilization of the hypervisor, right? So if any virtual machine is consuming more uh, like hardware resources, those kinds of logs will be stored into the monitoring relevant to the hardware utilization. And third one is for the logging means <coughs> whenever user logging in, whenever user logging off, whatever the activities they guys are doing, right? even for the city mm -hmm. administrator as well like if you are performing any activity all those logs will be there in that third database which is logging okay, okay. and as so uh, what we did <coughs> we have installed that uh, sql server on the same machine so that is the only reason why it is showing path as a local host right and if you mm -hmm. have any separate uh, sql server running in your organization in that case, you can replace the local host with the IP of the SQL server. Okay. Okay. Click on next. So what it is doing now, it is validating the database and it is creating three database in the SQL by name logging, like uh, what you have given like Indranagar logging and Indranagar uh, site database. Okay. So the license server also we installed on the same machine. It is the only reason why it is showing the local host. But in production, you will find the separate machines for every components, right? So by default, uh, Citrix provide 30 days trial license. After 30 days, you must have to procure the license. Okay. Click on next. So now we have to add the hypervisor, right? So Citrix is compatible with uh, all the three hypervisors which is available into the market, like uh, <coughs> VMware, vSphere, then your Hyper-V and then uh, Citrix, right? So mm -hmm. if you can click on that drop-down menu, you will get list of the hypervisors which are supported by the Citrix. 
Okay. Okay. So as uh, we deployed the Citrix hypervisor, so we will go with the Citrix, right? But in some organization, okay. you you may found like older hypervisors as well, like VMware and other. So uh, now we have to add the hypervisor here. So into the connection address, type HTTP colon double slash. Then IP address of your hypervisor. Uh, IP address of my hypervisor. What was it? Click on the local host. Click on the local host. Wait. At the top on left hand side, click on the. No, no. Click on the local host. Not here. Where? On your left hand side top. Right. Okay. Now from here you can see the IP. Cancel this. Go to the mm -hmm. home screen. You will see the IP. This one one dot nine zero. Okay. <laughs> okay. Enter username as root and enter the password for root user. In connection name, you can mention like uh, mm, Gen Server zero one. We are only having one hypervisor. Not this. It's X X for Gen. Hmm. Okay. So we are uh, we are using Citrix provisioning tools. That is fine. Click on next. Now it will validate the credentials. Okay. So. <laughs> in production, you will always find uh, some shared storage like uh, uh, NAS storage or SAN storage, right? And mm -hmm. but uh, in our testing, we are good to use the local storage of the hypervisor, which is 500 GB of SSD, right? Which is installed on your hypervisor. So select the second option. Perfect. Click on next. So our OS and template file both will be on the local storage, uh, which is fine. Click on next. Now name that connection name like Jan hyphen N hyphen zero one something like this identical. Jan hyphen N no no it's for the network now Jan hyphen N in caps. N is for network no N for network. Hyphen zero one. Perfect. Click on next. App be publishing is not required. We will publish our own app. Click on next. Finish it. So within some time, it will create the site for us. This will take some time. Ah, uh, five to ten minutes. Okay. Uh, so what all licenses we have here? Like what all will expire because we have only some time to just test out all these. So we no, no. Look, uh, thirty days license will be there. Okay, I think thirty days are enough to perform your testing, right? Right. So the uh, I mean that is for the SQL. So come uh, the Windows server I think is one eighty days, right? Yes, so that license you can take uh, from Microsoft, right? Right. Or you might be having some uh, like free licenses in your uh, 
organization you can check with the local it right who is managing the servers for you right we can check by mean but our aim is to just get the application working on the thin voice box and see that is functioning well so that we can uh, give it to the client uh, so we i mean our only requirement is to fully test the application make sure all the uh, all the features so it's like accessing the webcam things like that all right so now our site has been created so okay. first uh, thing is machine catalog click on the machine catalog This one, no, right? on, on, on your left hand side cancel this okay so machine catalogs are nothing it is a collection of your uh, virtual machines whatever the virtual machines we will create in citrix all those virtual machines will get listed here and go to the delivery group with the help of the delivery group we can restrict end user to get access to some specific applications only and with the application tab we can publish the applications to end user policies we can set as per our requirement and go to the logging into the logging <coughs> you will find like uh, as you are the administrator you perform some activity right so all those mm -hmm. logs are listed here like what you have did at what time right those kind of okay things and into the administrator you will get the list of administrator like setix administrator who is responsible to manage the entire infra in the controller you will get delivery controller details in the hosting you will get a list of all the hypervisors okay okay licensing uh, right now you are having 30 days license so it is fine store front uh, we have configured store front uh, on a different machine and app be publishing is not required and zone is for the time zone only okay <coughs> okay now now go to that machine uh, app server so why we are creating this master image look as you are publishing the application right for your organization mm -hmm. in future mm -hmm. you might uh, got some updated version or latest version right or you need to update right. the application of uh, you need to update the application right so those kind mm -hmm. of operations first you have to perform on the master image then you can push the changes into the production right you cannot directly mm -hmm. shut down the server and you know it will impact the end users right so mm -hmm. now we have to configure this as a uh, master image right so right. now mount the iso media Uh, mount the ISO media. Yeah, in this machine, minimize this from drop down menu. Mount the Citrix ISO media. Uh -huh. okay. Citrix virtual apps under stores. Okay. Now go to the full screen mode. Now launch the installer. Go with the second one. So now what we did, we configured delivery controller, we configured the store front, license server is there, studio is there, right? Now right. we have to install virtual delivery agent in this machine. So go with the second option, virtual delivery agent for Windows multi-session OS. Okay. Now what we have to do, we have to create the master image, right? So first one is okay, click on next. Virtual delivery agent is mandatory. Citrix workspace app is not required in the virtual machine. Simply click on next. Go with the default options only. Simply click on next. Uh, delivery controller address. So uh, enter uh, ddc.uv.com. Ddc. Uh, dot dot uv. Your domain. Dot com. Click on test yes, connection. Yeah. Okay. Click on add. Click on add. Perfect. Mm, now click on the next. Mm, remote assistant is not required. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Uh, simply click on next. Now port numbers will be opened during the installation. That is fine. 
next okay prerequisites and the summary click on install <laughs> again it will take some time in the meantime go to the store front okay click on the start you will get one option store front expand the settings folder oh, no, no. sorry where click on the start menu start menu okay so expand the settings click on the store front It will take a while for first time. <coughs> In the meantime, go to the uh, master image and see if it is asking to reboot the app server. First one, again, not asking right now. I go to the storefront. Uh, create a new deployment so that will be our uh, base URL it is fine click on next Okay, go and check that uh, application server status. Mm, still not asking to reboot. Okay, go back. Okay, I think store trend is done. No, 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 no. Wait for it. It will take some time. Oh, okay. okay. Next. Yes. A store name, enter the store name. Okay, click on next. So we have to add the delivery controller now. Click on add button. <coughs> click on add. Now same DDC dot uh, dot com. Click OK. Now in the transport type, change it to uh, no, no, no. Click on edit. Change the transport type to HTTP. Perfect. Click OK. Next. Next. Again, next. Create it. it will take some time in the meantime go back to application server and check okay restart it and after reboot login with the same user account okay Got it.
ഇതൊക്കെയാണ് ഓരോന്നും ഓക്കെ സ്റ്റോർ ട്രെയിൻ ക്രിയേറ്റഡ് സക്സസ്ഫുള്ളി ഐ ക്ലിക്ക് ഓൺ ഫിനിഷ് യെസ് ക്ലിക്ക് ഓൺ ഫിനിഷ് now click on view or change store uh click on receiver for website sorry where uh, receiver for websites okay right click on it and copy url this is a url okay so okay you cannot directly copy from here in your in your laptop open the web browser and type that url no copy paste will not work you have to manually okay uh, let me just con uh, maximize okay. this is the store for your end user right uh right it is work space work space installed or not in this in this my machine no it's not installed mm, click on detect receiver mm 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 i agree and click on download here it is downloading click on the try download i think it's loading right okay uh, appears this network like i think with microsoft and there is something blocking here i'll just get it downloaded from another system yeah download it and uh, install it in this machine okay i have the wise box also ready uh, mm-hmm. just letting it so could you just explain we have we uh, have the citrix storefront in this application we got the url now we entered this url like what are we doing on my system my uh, this local machine or what is the citrix workspace do hello hello is it downloaded uh no uh, so i'm getting somebody else to download and share it with me on the system it seems to be blocked okay so uh, that application you also ha- must have to install in your uh, dell wise as well okay okay on this system as well as on the dell wise i have to install it yes on every end user device this application is must to launch this session okay okay but i uh, on the dell wise i think uh, there is okay i'll just uh, there's no option to install the application we will have to put, 
it supports putting uh, directly the uh, Citrix URL over there. Right, but session will get launched with the help of .ica file from Citrix, right? So okay. to launch that file, this application is must. Okay, okay. <laughs> Uh, go back to that application server and check the status. What is going on over there? Login with same user account.
Care to be installed application for nothing like that, you know? No, sir. No, then it's okay. You only just told, uh, I didn't just read this comment. Okay, then it's okay. So, you told us one will be helping out to install it. Right. Maybe it's also not coming. You just click the everything. Okay. Uh, so I'm installing Citrix workspace now onto my system. Mm -hmm. Is this required? Uh, no, no. Start app. Simply, simply click on install. And the voice box, how do I put this application over there? This is an exe file, right? Microsoft Windows file. Mm -hmm. On the voice box, it doesn't support .exe, right? What do I install over there? No, no, it will support. Now, why? It, it, it's running on Windows or what? What is this over? It's not Windows, right? <laughs> I think I need Docker. Somewhere I saw Docker storefront URL something. Uh, should I click on add account? No, no, click on finish. Now go to that uh, URL. That is four twenty URL. Yeah. Okay, I'll open. Mm -hmm. Open Citrix. Launch it. <coughs> now, okay. uh, log in with any of, of the test users. Any of the test users, so yeah. test user one at ub.com. Mm -hmm. Was it? Yes. Okay. So as you can see right now, there is nothing published to those users because okay. our master image is not ready. We will publish soon. No. Okay, how did it come to me? Uh, remote connection, remote connection. Okay. And also, uh, just uh, try to open the same URL in your uh, in your Dell device. So Dell device, uh, I'm still figuring it out. So it's not hmm. Windows OS. So when you open remote connections, there is a broker. It's thin OS on the machine, and mm -hmm. uh, on that you have remote connections. When I go to remote connections, there is something called as broker setup. Mm -hmm. And uh, select broker type, it's selected Citrix and, and there is a broker server option. Uh, no, no, I, I, that means Citrix workspace is already installed in your web browser, in your device, is it? I'm not sure, it came like this. Okay, we'll see it that. OS. It has uh, this remote connection, doesn't seem to be. So somebody else told us that we just need to put uh, the storefront URL over here. Yeah, that try that, be... try that. Uh, just uh, try that as well, okay? Okay. Directly open the URL, okay? Okay.
go back to that application server application servers okay uncheck that box and click on finish Restart. Uh, restart. Yeah, restarted. So basically, what we are doing, we are configuring this as a master image. It is almost done, right? Now we will publish the application from the machine catalogs, not with the master image. Why? Because this master image is now available for the R and D purpose, right? So if you need to perform some upgrade activity in future so you can pick that master image and from that master image you can update your applications okay uh, so this app server inside that we have the uh, we have the that's a master image and on that if i after making some changes i mm -hmm. just can you just remind me how do i uh, create the master image once again or nothing what we did we have configured one server right we have added that server into our domain and then what we did we installed one application and to to configure this as a master image we have installed virtual delivery agent that's okay it. so that's it okay so whatever i installed on this uh, application server will be it will automatically be the uh, master image yes okay Okay, I'll just put try putting that uh, URL onto the uh, on the pin OS. One second.
Yeah, hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. We are, we are trying to configure the pin uh, wise box, but thing is, whatever I put, I finally it's giving me host sf zero one not found. That. Uh, that we will check. Yeah. First, we have to publish the application, right? So share your screen. Okay. Now, okay. Uh, shut down that uh, master uh, server. Log into that server. <clears throat> Which server? Application server. Yes. Shut down this. Uh, shut down, is it? Okay. <clears throat> now uh, go to the delivery controller okay delivery controller not domain controller DDC. okay login there <laughs> okay now uh, go to the machine catalog Now here, create okay. machine catalog. So what we are doing now, we are creating one more virtual machine from our master image. Okay. So okay. click on next. So it's a multi session. Click on next. Now our machines are powered managed. Perfect. And this is a uh, MCS uh, services we are using. Click on next. 
now it will automatically detect the snapshot of application server so expand that first one application server so select this one and click on next <coughs> now it is asking like uh, how many uh, virtual machines do you want to uh, create right so it with uh, in a single click you can create thousand of virtual machines at a time right but it's totally up to your hardware so we are going we will create only one machine click on next now it is asking uh, for the ou right so we have created one ou by name uh, virtual machine right scroll down okay scroll down yeah select this now it is asking for the new machine host name right so just type mm -hmm. uh, awp awp app yeah app hyphen server as as we are okay hyphen two time hash so okay. this is a basically a uh, account naming scheme right so right now we are creating only one machine so our machine host name will be app server hyphen 01 right but for an for an example if we have to create 100 of machines right so in that case what it will do it will create the host name like app server hyphen 010203 till 100 count right and it will automatically add all those machines into a domain right okay so okay. click on next so uh, name this machine catalog name like uh, the application name uh, what uh, what you are publishing enter that name uh, sorry what should i give uh... Uh, should be identical like uh, for which purpose we are creating this machine catalog right so just enter uh, your application name which you are going to publish for end, end users so i'll just say uv app hyphen test okay finish it so now what it will do it will copy your master image and in some time it will create one new virtual machine by our name app server hyphen 01 in your hypervisor right you have nothing to do now minimize this and in some time on your left hand side you will find one more virtual machine will be created by name app svr hyphen 01 okay so be same thing why we are creating a master image because we do not have to you know if there is a requirement for end user to publish in the desktop right so we cannot configure a separate server again and again for new joiners we just have to copy the master image and from master image we can publish the same replica to any user got, got it so creating the master image it's uh, only a one time task right mm -hmm. got it so you can see on your left hand side it is preparing new machine i see that and it will take a while 2 to 3 minutes okay
Okay, I think that got closed. Uh, machine catalog is done. Okay, so now what we have to do, we have to publish uh, the application, whatever we installed, right, to end user. Mm -hmm. So for the same, uh, we have to create one delivery group, right? So go to the delivery mm -hmm. group. And before that, uh, just uh, power on that uh, app server hyphen zero one machine. Right click and power it on. Yeah. Okay. Now uh, go to the console and see. Okay, it is booting up. Uh, go to the delivery controller. Now create a delivery group. Next. So we have one machine here. Uh, click on next. Now we have to restrict uh, the access of this delivery group to specific users, right? So uh, select restrict use of delivery group. Now click on add and type test zero uh, one or just type test. Click on check names. Select all the three. So we have added three users in this delivery group. Click OK. Now click on next. Again, we have to publish the application. Click on add. Uh, from start menu. No, from start menu. OK, uh, that machine is not powered on, right? So uh, cancel this. Again, click on add from a start menu. Mm -hmm. Go to that machine. Yeah, it is booting up. Go to the city studio delivery controller. Okay. Mm, now click on add. Uh, Still wait for this. Wait for that machine. Mm -hmm. uh, app, uh, our zero one machine only, right? Not the master. No, no, master one. We are not publishing any application from the master email, right? Okay. Now this we don't have to start, right? Yeah, just confirm. Yes. The machine is ready. Mm -hmm. Try one more time. Go to the delivery controller and check. No need to log in, right? It, it still showed me. No, 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 uh, no. It's... You do not have to log into that machine. Yeah, but it's still showing the same. Right? It will take some time. Uh, that machine is not registered, actually. Okay.
cancel this cancel this click on cancel uh, click on machine catalog Click on refresh. Okay. Okay. Now double click on this machine. Yeah, double click on it. So machine is uh, right now it's in unregistered state, right? So <laughs> refresh this. Again refresh and wait for this to get registered. Sorry, what are we waiting for? Uh, we are waiting for this machine to register with the delivery controller. Okay, this unregistered will change to registered. Okay. Yes. Do one thing, uh, log into that machine. Okay, that's loaded. Uh, go back to the studio and check the status. Refresh this. Okay. Okay, so now, now create the delivery group. Again, restrict that to test users. Click on next. Click on add. Now it will automatically now pop up all the applications which is installed in this machine, right? So okay. you have to pick your application, select okay. it, click OK, click on next. Uh, we do not want any desktop. If you need any desktop to be published for end user, you can do that. But for now, let it be, click on next. Now enter the delivery group name. Delivery group name. Okay. Same name you can use now what you have given to machine catalog. Okay. I'll just give you VDG01. Okay. Click on finish. That's it. Now go to the store URL. No, no. Go open the URL in your, in your laptop. Okay. Login. You was using the test user, right? Mm -hmm.
so go okay. to the application okay. now launch the application double click on it right single click it and yeah. it's yes open it uh, permit use permit use hello hmm yeah i gave permit use are we supposed to be, uh, is it anything supposed to come or hello am i sure on mute <laughs> yeah hi tell me Uh, I gave permit use. Uh, mm -hmm. Is that it? I mean, nothing else came. It will launch. It will launch. Uh, double click on one more time. Okay, I'll click on the single. Mm -hmm. Okay, it is launched okay. already. Now you can uh, continue with the application. I don't know how to use it, but it is okay. 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 How how do we configure that network? Uh, uh, go to that machine and see if the internet is working in it or not. In which that, machine? That uh, first machine. App server zero one. Yes. Uh, check. Yeah, I think that is the issue. Mm -hmm. Go open the network connection in this machine and see why it is not getting internet. Click on Ethernet. Double click. Check the IP. I think the IP seems to be fine, mm, and it should work, right? Uh, do one thing. Go to the properties. Uh, DHCP server is one nine two one six eight one dot one. Hmm. So it is getting IP from DSCP. Do one thing. Okay. Uh, close mm -hmm. this and go to the properties. Double click on it. So DNS is also entered, right? Mm. Do one thing. Uh, make DNS uh, automatically and check. Okay. One second, mouse is not moving correctly. Do one thing. Take a take a remote of this machine, na RDP. Okay. Uh...
Oh, okay. Wait, 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 wait. Internet is enabled now. You can see. Yeah, I can see here. Yeah. Now try to open the Google.com. Okay, now we're seems to. Yeah. Now, uh, now go to the application which is launched. Yes. Okay, it is giving me 200. That is working. So, network seems to be okay. Mm -hmm. uh, now, we need this application on the thin OS, uh, thin device, uh, voice box. Yes, and also, uh, I'm not sure how you will manage your user accounts, right? So, you must have to uh, create the user accounts in Active Directory, right? Sorry, could you just repeat again? Like, you must have to create all the, you know, user account in Active Directory server, right? Okay. So then only users will be able to access now. Why? Because right now, uh, test users uh, can access the application. Okay. And, but, uh, to, uh, how are your IT team is managing the user accounts? It's on uh, Active Directory or, or all users are local users? So uh, we don't use any of this. This is for the client and client uh, would be using Active Directory. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we don't, we only need to test and make sure that the application uh, works on us on the, uh, on this uh, thin voice box, which mm -hmm. is deployed using Citrix. Okay, give me uh, a minute, give me a minute. I, I will be back here. Yeah. Okay, so now what you have to do, uh, okay. you have to check uh, the functionality with your uh, thin client, okay? Okay. Uh, do you have any thin client with you right now? Yes, and it's uh, booted up also, yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, open the same URL on your thin client. So when you're new to the thin client and uh, all I get is on remote connections, there's a broker setup options or is there any other way? Like how do I set this up? Mm, I'm not sure for the, you know, the thin devices, right? So okay. it should work like uh, means one web browser should be there, right? In that web browser, you have to uh, enter the store URL. So... Uh... What I see, uh, so what I saw from the Dell website, and uh, the only there, there is there is no browser here. There is a mm -hmm. uh, broker setup, and mm -hmm. in that select broker type, the option there is an option Citrix send, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. I have selected, uh -huh. and the broker server I have given HTTP colon slash slash SF hyphen zero one slash Citrix hyphen mm -hmm. which is a uh, CloudFront URL, mm -hmm. and uh, <coughs> that's it when i click on after uh, i mean when we restart the system it's automatically supposed to take us over there mm -hmm. but what is happening is it is giving me the error uh, host sf uh, 01 not found uh, mm -hmm. they are not do one thing mm -hmm. are you able to open uh, command prompt in your dell device Yes, and I'm able to ping my local device as well. No, not local. Just try to ping the store front. Okay.
Okay, so, so it would be like ping SF hyphen zero one, right? Mm -hmm. It's not pinging. So something is blocking. Try to ping with the IP. So IP as in I, sh I should be trying the 1.97. No, no. What is the IP address of your store front server? Check the IP of store front and try to ping that IP from your Dell uh, device. Okay. Keep forgetting. I have to check the IP from here. What is the IP address for your Dell device? So I don't see an option anywhere to see the IP address, but I'm able to ping to my local Windows machine. That is successful. But I tried pinging this cloud uh, so which is not which is not going. Meaning this this IP is not being not right? successful, but my local. Sorry, uh, that one dot uh, triple one IP you are not getting ping, right? I am not getting ping, correct? Uh, from your Dell device. Yes. Mm -hmm -hmm. Both are on the same network or what? Both are on the same network. I am able to ping to my uh, own IP address one dot. Uh, all of their yeah I just test I just confirmed again to my local windows this is successful mm -hmm. For every authentication, it would be uh, the domain would be you say uv or uv.com. Uh, uh, uv.com. Uv.com and username which I tried is test user 01 and the password is uh, yeah, password I have entered. Uh, mm -hmm. And the broker, let me just try restarting the system once again. Okay, so our setup is almost ready. Okay, you can uh, do the R and D and let me know. I'm going for a break now. Okay. Sure, sure. Okay. okay bye. Okay. Thank you.